Now, here's another lichenoid disease, but it doesn't always look lichenoid. It depends what stage you see it at clinically, but this is one that anyone who does GYN pathology is going to encounter, okay? Or, or genitourinary, because this can occur in the, the vulva and also on the glands or the foreskin of the penis. And this is lichen sclerosus. Note that it's with a U, not an I, going way back to old school Latin and stuff, but it's important in dermatology to spell some of these words that have a unique spelling, uh, like nevus sebaceus that has a U-S instead of an O-U-S, or lichen sclerosus. It does have sclerosis with an I, but the name is sclerosus with a U. And in the older days, it was called lichen sclerosus et atropicus because the epidermis gets usually quite atrophic over top. And then underneath you get a band of homogenized, dense pink collagen. And under that, you tend to get a band of lymphocytes and sometimes histiocytes. And what happens is this disease starts as an interface dermatitis, kind of a lichenoid process like lichen planus. And then it burns down. And as it goes deeper in the dermis, it leaves a wasteland of sclerotic collagen behind it. And then that band goes down. So on a small, a thin shave, you may not see much of the inflammation there, but you Usually there's at least a little bit at the at the edge between the, the leading edge of this sclerotic collagen and the regular thicker bundles of the reticular dermis. You can clearly see how different that collagen is from this collagen. And it's important because lichen sclerosus is a, a very uncomfortable and morbid disease for the patient. And also they have a higher risk of, of developing differentiated vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia, DVIN, which can be quite uh, subtle and challenging to recognize. Um, I still am always paranoid that I'm going to miss that. So if I see uh, more atypia or thickening of the epidermis, acanthosis over lichen sclerosis, I'll sometimes do a P53 immunostain, which should show like diffuse staining um, along the basal keratinocytes or, or sometimes complete loss, depending on if it's the null type or not. And then I'll often show my uh, colleagues, including my GYN colleagues, to make sure I'm not missing a, a subtle DVIN because those uh, that form of um, squamous intraepithelial uh, lesion has a higher risk of developing invasive squamous cell carcinoma. So an important disease to know about. Um, and look here, usually even in the sclerotic areas, if you look around, you'll see the interface is a little bit fuzzy and there are dying keratinocytes. That can be sometimes very focal and you don't usually need to find that. that once you have the sclerotic band and it's in the vulva, I mean, it's got to be like in sclerosis unless there's some other very unique situation like radiation history or something like that that could mimic this. So that's like in sclerosis. And here's a great uh, slide. I really love this because here you can see the classic like in sclerosis. And over here you see if I just had this side, the right side of the picture, I would only be able to say, well, there's a dense lichenoid band there of lymphocytes and probably plasma cells, which is common in the genital region. Although if I see a lot of them, I'll sometimes still do a syphilis stain just to be sure. Um, but this over here is what we call the inflammatory phase of lichen sclerosis. So on a biopsy that just shows a lichenoid band in the genital region, I will say lichenoid dermatitis or lichenoid mucositis, depending on if it's on the skin or in the actual mucosa. And I'll bring up that this could be lichen sclerosis inflammatory phase, or it could be lichen planus or some other lichenoid process. Um, so that's important to know. It's you got to be able to see the sclerotic collagen to know that it's lichen sclerosis for sure, at least in, in my experience. The other thing is, look at this. There's spongiosis here. So again, this is this is here probably as a kind of secondary uh, finding. The main pattern here is the inflama inflammatory uh, lichenoid band and the sclerosis down here. That's the main disease here. There's sponge probably because the patient's putting something topical on it and they're getting a secondary contact dermatitis on top of it. Very common for <clears throat> anogenital uh, inflammatory diseases. They're often uncomfortable, itchy. Patients are going to try to self-treat uh, usually before seeking care and before you know undergoing a biopsy of a very sensitive anatomic site. So I, I find it very common to have spongiosis and, and eosinophils and features maybe of contact dermatitis or also of chronic scratching and erosion and ulceration. I find that very often in the setting of lichen sclerosis.